Welcome to Chinwag Tuesdays, your passport to a world of language and culture. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Chinwag Tuesdays. I'm Amanda and today's special guest is also Amanda. So Amanda is another Australian (laughs) from Perth, also teaching English, but specifically to Italian speakers, which is really cool. So thank you so much for being here, Amanda. Thank you for having me. And yeah, I'm really glad that I came across your profile on Instagram. And I had I know, to reach out so to you as soon as I saw Amanda. It's <laughs> like, okay, there's another Amanda from Australia. So yeah, yes. definitely had to reach out. What are the chances actually? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know. They probably, they probably are a lot of Amandas out there, but specifically doing like ESL teaching. It's really cool. Yeah, exactly. Australian English. So yeah, yeah we're on to yeah. it. <laughs> Definitely. And that leads us yeah. into your introduction. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> okay. So I'm an English teacher. English is a second language. And I've been teaching since 2010. So basically, I've always had this really strong desire to kind of, you know, move to Italy to to live in Italy. So that all sort of fell into place yeah, when I was dating a guy back in yeah 2009 and he had to move to Italy. So yeah, I ended up falling into teaching because we couldn't find any work. You know, I sort of sent out like hundreds of CVs and yeah, nobody took me on. I had, you know, English, I had Italian, I had lots of work experience, but you know, it wasn't like Australia over there. So Mm -hmm. then I fell into the role of teaching. Yeah, just by like putting some flyers out, you know, I had the the kangaroo, the koala, the Australian flag, everything possible to attract people to my flyer. And yeah, that's where it all took off. And yeah, since then I've been teaching. I've kind of delved into other things as well, but teaching has always stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. 2010, my goodness. And flyers, that was obviously before, well, the ah, internet yes. had probably <laughs> just come out. Yeah, but flyers yeah. Were, would have been more effective. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I had yeah, put them wow. around supermarkets, gyms, schools. Yeah, I just yeah. needed to get work. Yeah. Because we were, yeah, we were initially, one of the jobs that we found was working on commission-based selling mm-hmm. Vodafone contracts. <gasps> so... Yes. And wow. Yeah, I had, I had do. sort of, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I had come from, from Australia where I'd been studying art, fine arts. And I thought, you know, there's no way that I'm going to be doing anything like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, when I stepped foot into Italy, I realized that, you know, every second person was an artist. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that basically, yeah. you know, I didn't really have anything particular to offer. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we just, we needed to make money and we both ended up selling these these Vodafone contracts. So mm-hmm. we sort of started selling them to all of my partner's extended family at the time, all of my family that I, I still have, you know, in the south of Italy. And once we'd done that and, you know, made some sort of an income, yeah, we, we didn't really know what to do next. And yeah. It was one of those, you know, door knocking jobs. It was like in the midst of the winter and yeah, I hated it. Like it it was really hard because people, you know, don't really trust over there. They're not going to open their doors willingly Mm. for you to let you in and and try and sell something to them. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was a real challenge. And then I was like, I need to, to use my English and that's, that's how it took off. So Yeah. But it was all a learning process. No, 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 that's okay. Yeah, yeah. It was all like a big learning process because obviously I hadn't taught English before. And, you know, being here, like I had to study Italian. So that sort of helped me because I had to study all of the grammar quite extensively, which helped me then to be able to teach Italian. So to teach English. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, aside from that, like I had no idea how to actually teach our grammar and yeah like pronunciation and and really really important things like that so yeah yeah and I know that you have done your CELTA certification so did you do that in Italy or back in Australia 
back in Australia because nobody asks wow. questions in Italy. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, not for English teachers. So yeah, it's like if you're a native speaker, then that's all that counts really. I was fortunate enough to come across another Australian girl from Melbourne who was living in the same town as me. So I was in Turin in the north, but I was in a small town called Vinovo. And yeah, when I when I saw that, you know, she was working, I was like, what? It's insane. And she, yeah, came across my flyer. She called me straight away for an interview as she'd just opened a school. And yeah, I just mm-hmm. started working, working for her, apart from my yeah. private tutoring. And thanks to her, I was able to enter into the primary schools, high schools. We even did business English. So we went to different companies mm-hmm. and were teaching them. I went to some daycare, some, some childcare centers, um, yeah. taught English there. Yeah, it was quite diverse. I, I did summer camps, lots and lots of different things. And yeah. nobody ever asked for a qualification. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of just learnt on the job and yeah, yeah, it was fine. But then when I came back to Australia, I did a little bit of interior design because I wanted to get back into, you know, something artistic. And then I found that it wasn't quite for me because, I don't know, I was more interested in design living in Italy. But when I came back to, I don't know, I just, I found it to be a little bit flat and, you know, people who actually needed help decorating their homes Uh, yeah they kind of wanted to go for the more neutral tones and yeah Mm. it just wasn't that exciting for me so then I I thought okay I'm going to start teaching English again because I saw there was a need yeah but to do that I needed to do CELTA so yeah you know here it's it's all about qualifications certifications so I Mm -hmm. yeah found a school and then went and did my CELTA which was really cruisy for me because I had had all that experience, you know, previous experience. So yeah, yeah, it was great. Like I was able to just sort of fly through it and get the certification and then be able to work here. Yeah. 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 Wow. And how long did you spend in Italy all up during that time when you were teaching English? So I have been back a few times, but the first time Mm -hmm. teaching was three years. I had been there before that because I did my second year of university in Florence and I had stayed longer at that time because, you know, I had fallen for a guy over there as you do. And I stayed, (laughs) yeah, stayed longer. Yes. (laughs) That's what happens. So (laughs) yeah, I mean that, that sort of obviously helped me in my journey of learning Italian as well. But yeah, so I stayed longer. Then I came back and after, I don't know, about a year and a half or so I met this other Italian guy here and he had to go back to Italy because his working holiday visa had finished. And yeah, I was like, okay, yep, I'm coming with you. (laughs) So (laughs) for me, it was just an excuse to be over there again. And then, yeah, it was three years that we spent. We were only meant to stay one year, but because I had so many students and yeah, like living over there, I had this possibility to travel more, to learn, you know, from a different culture. I just thought, okay, why not? So we stayed and then, yeah, we ended up moving back here. And then I think it was like a few years later, I I moved back again for about a year. And then, you know, before COVID, I was traveling back every year. So I was always looking to do summer camps. Yeah. So it was just like an excuse. I mean, this is the beauty of being an English teacher. Like you have this, you know, reason that you can stay longer in places as well because, you know, yeah. you can you can offer, you know, the language to to others and there's lots of mm-hmm. different, you know, summer camps and schools that need teachers just for certain periods of time. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was really good. So that's what I was doing every year, just going for about three yeah. or four months and uh-huh. working and traveling. And then yeah. yeah, being able to come back here and still have work. So, so yeah, yeah, that was definitely that was good. And but now oh, it's different. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, that's now... okay. Sorry, I keep interrupting. I have so many questions. <laughs> that's right. You can ask. Yeah, yeah. But now it's different because I have my daughter. So she's yeah. five and I still go back often. You know, I'll be going back. Yeah, it's a fourth time this year. So so we are lucky um, to be able to do that. But I'm, you know, not able to to do what I used to do before and just stay for yeah. periods of time in a school because obviously I have to look after her. 
So, yeah. 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 And so I know that your main focus now is specifically to Italian speakers. So how long have you been focusing on Italian speakers only, or has that been your focus since you went back to Australia? So, yeah, it's like, it's an interesting question because I actually, I love teaching all nationalities because, you know, you can learn so much. This is the beauty of teaching English, right? Like you just, when, when we go into that conversation, part of the lesson, like, you know, debating different topics, it's really nice to get everyone's different opinions and, and learn Mm -hmm. from one another. But obviously in Italy, it was only Italians. So, you know, I felt like I, I sort of, you know, was a step up because I was able to help them knowing their language. And yeah, I had learned so many of the, the common errors, you know, but then also like, so when I came back, I worked in some colleges here mm-hmm. and that was obviously, you know, students from, from all different nationalities. And then, yeah, I sort of stuck to that for, well, I, I have stuck to that for the last few years but what happened is I went to Italy in 2022 for four months. Mm-hmm. And after coming back, I, I said, okay, like, do I do my own thing now or do I go back to the school? And yeah, I don't know. I just decided, you know what? I want this flexibility. I already had quite a few private students who were Italians contacting me for IELTS or PTE exams you know, which is needed to stay here in Australia and to get a like permanent visa or sponsorship. So yeah, I just I just decided to to start and word of mouth and you know, I just kept having more students. Mm-hmm. Then obviously I have an Instagram page and I had been thinking about doing an Instagram page for like three years and never did anything. <laughs> Cause <Yeah. laughs> I was like too scared to you know put myself out there and to start Mm -hmm. filming and posting and you know it's it's another job yeah yeah Yeah, true Uh, (laughs) so yeah I mean pretty much because of that I I just thought okay I'm just going to keep going with with what I have and then you know I took like a, a very short business course and it kind of pushed me to just do it like yeah just just find your niche, <laughs> find your target and start, you know, teaching towards that that one nationality. So I, yeah. yeah, started it and it's been great. I think what I love about it is that I'm here, but I'm able to feel connected to Italy, which is really important for me because I have this uh, like feeling as if, you know, like my soul is, is, fed when I'm like over there and then yeah yeah, like I I just need to keep all the time you know in contact with the culture so that I don't lose anything or I don't stop speaking or um, yeah and yeah I mean I don't know like how do you feel about sort of teaching Indians do you feel like you connect more from living over there to be honest, I don't really have a lot of Indian students. I mean, I have a few in Australia, but I don't have any Indian students living here. Yes, before when I was like teaching on like Cambly and things like that, when I had like a broad range of students, definitely helped mm-hmm. me connect more. Especially now I'm like a bit more advanced. I'm still intermediate, but I'm a bit mm-hmm. more advanced in Hindi than mm-hmm. when I first started teaching. But yeah, what you were saying before about understanding by learning Italian and understanding Italian grammar, it helped you with English grammar. Mm. I completely relate to that because before Mm. I started, before I started learning Hindi, I kid you not, I only, I only knew what a noun was. Mm -hmm. That's all. I just knew a noun Mm -hmm. as a person, place, thing, object. No idea what an adjective, adverb, verb, didn't know anything about grammar because we're just taught that. And you don't actually yeah, we don't know study the enough here in Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just learn the basics, right? Yeah. So, yeah, by learning Hindi has really helped me to understand English grammar a lot better. Yeah. And even like I use Duolingo just to kind of like practice Hindi, and mm-hmm. I've started remembering now the I guess the Hindi version of the present perfect tense. 
because Mm -hmm. only because I've been able to understand that in English, because I remember learning this concept or this like rule in Hindi when I was going through Hindi school, couldn't get it, could not understand Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just now literally just a few weeks ago, I was like, oh my God, I actually understand now how to use it. And I've been able to (laughs) use it like speaking with my husband or speaking with my teacher. So that's been really cool. Yeah. No, I mean, unfortunately, yeah, in Australia, we just don't put much emphasis on on grammar and it's more, you know, spelling and I mm-hmm. guess, yeah, I just remember doing spelling tests every day at school Yeah, and I was always excited to get 20 out of 20. No, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I always enjoyed doing the spelling tests, but, you know, now yeah. it's anyone, any student student's worst nightmare but yeah we, we focused I guess a lot on on that and you know debating and public speaking and presenting it's like book analysis character analysis all these sorts of things but not so much the grammar not breaking it down so mm-hmm. I mean that's something that I actually really enjoyed studying the grammar in Italian maybe because yeah. it felt so structured um, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I can because, understand that. Yeah, you know, like English has so many exceptions, but, you know, we're yeah. here to help people <laughs> with those exceptions. But, yeah, so I think, yeah, I kind of I kind of enjoyed that. And then it's, yeah, obviously it made it easier for me to be able to teach Italians because then I, I kind of understand, you know, where they need that extra help or, you know, where things didn't make any sense to me and then how it would be for them. So, yeah, and there's so many Italians here in Australia now that yeah I'm like why not you know if if I can yeah can help them that little bit extra then yeah. yeah and it's it's just nice to yeah to be able to help them change their lives you know because the the economy in Italy is not great so a lot of the younger generation are moving like they're moving abroad yeah and you know to stay here they need English and it's really hard for them to understand Australian English. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's nice teaching Italians because they have a good sense of humor. So we tend to, you know, joke around a lot. We can laugh about things and yeah. you know, take it quite lightly. But as you know, Australian English is is tricky because the accent mm-hmm. is, you know, I think American English, they kind of prolong some of the pronunciation on words. So, yeah. And there's a stronger R. So it's easier for Mm -hmm. someone to have that moment to to go, okay, and take in the word and, you know, understand what's been said. Obviously, British pronunciation, well, it depends from where in the UK, but, you know, there's that stronger T, stronger consonant sounds. So, yeah, a little bit easier to, to identify words. But with fast-paced Australian, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah, it's yeah, it's tricky, it's... and yeah, so yeah. I don't know. Like I find, yeah, probably like in the last year, I've really started working a lot more on pronunciation because I think before it was more just getting you know confidence up and and getting students to to speak and to be able to you know understand. But now I'm really, really focusing more on our pronunciation because yeah. they need to know those rules. I mean, I say to them, if you don't want to apply that, then that's fine. But if you're not actually verbally trying to make those sounds, it may be more difficult for you to then understand them. Um, yeah, true. So, yeah, I mean, we we try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually, because... I'm obviously I I teach like accent as well and I mean I'm definitely someone that I don't think there's anything wrong at all with having your native accent and if you want to keep your accent fine I'm not going to sit there and tell you you should have an Australian accent Yeah, exactly but obviously people come because they want to improve their own accent okay that's fine I'll help you but same thing when I'm teaching the Australian accent I'll say to students like you don't have to try and speak this way but it will help you understand the people around you if you try and understand yeah. how to do it yourself. So yeah. yeah, it is important to even just understand it. No, exactly, exactly. And then, you know, they they obviously need help with, you know, all the like the different stress on words because the yeah, Italians tend to 
put the stress in the wrong wrong spot. <laughs> so yeah. that's fine, but sometimes they're then misunderstood because of that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's just a matter of someone sort of understanding you, you know, immediately or someone having to look at you and go, oh, okay, okay, that's what you mean. So yeah, yeah. there's like these things that, that we need to work on. Yeah. But it's fun. Like I actually, I find it really good fun now. Just sort of laughing yeah. about some of the things we do in Australian English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the shortening yeah. of everything. So, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> My husband and I had a miscommunication the other day. Not the one I put on Instagram about phone off the hook, but there was another one. Oh, yeah. and I can't remember what it was now. It was literally two days after that phone off, off the hook. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, we've been together over six years. I've been mm-hmm. living in India for five years and there's still like these like language miscommunications where we just look at each other and go, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it and doesn't... it's stuff you don't realise that other people wouldn't know. No. <laughs> no, I mean, when you, I guess when I look at sort of like literal translations, yeah, it doesn't make any sense, you know, to a foreigner. You know, I mean, I know a, bit, a little bit of Spanish, but yes, I don't know how to speak other languages, so I'm not really sure how it works for, for other other nationalities but yeah I mean you think about sort of all of our phrasal verbs and Mm -hmm. they don't make any sense to anyone like yeah even my dad who is Italian but anyway he came here when he was 15 he's very Aussie now and you know he'll he'll sometimes speak to my Italian friends and he'll just say you know something like yeah, yeah, you know, Amanda takes after me. And then, you know, an Italian is thinking take, take, anyway, an Italian is prendere, so to take an object, yeah. right? So yeah. it's like the logic, uh, they're finding it really hard. It would just be easier if he said, I'm, oh, Amanda resembles me or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but when I say it, when I look at my dad and I'm like, can you please say that in a different way? He doesn't, he doesn't know how. He just says, you know, the same mm. thing again at the yeah. same speed. And, <laughs> and you know, this example is like most Australians do that. They yeah. will just repeat at the same speed with the same vocab, same vocabulary. Yeah. And yeah. it's really, really hard for, you know, for foreigners to understand, mm-hmm. you know, non-native speakers <laughs> to understand that. Yeah. So, you know, it's like I'm going to call off the party or I'm going to call off the meeting. If we just said I'm going to cancel the meeting, yeah, it would, it would be easier because, you know, <clears throat> others are thinking, oh, call, I'm going to call someone like on the phone, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's all these things that they're just not taught, you know, mm-hmm. in the textbooks. Well, not like there's not enough emphasis put on them. And yeah then, you know, when you go to to an English-speaking country and, you know, places like Australia where, yeah, we haven't really studied much grammar and we haven't studied necessarily other languages because, you know, True. it's not a necessity. Yeah. Then it's really hard for Australians to know how to reword and rephrase something mm-hmm. because they're not used to it. I guess they just assume that you understand English. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I see this like all the time and I'm there thinking, just say a different word. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's hard. Like they can't, they can't do it. Yeah. And, you know, you must, you must come across like all that, which I think you're doing an amazing job at teaching, you know, all the abbreviations, like. Thanks. You know, <laughs> I'm a bit unco, I'm a bit uncoordinated. Yeah. Oh, I'm devil, I can't come tonight. You know, I'm devastated. Yeah. yeah. Go a hundred Ks an hour. You know, what's Ks? Ah, oh, kilometers. True. Like yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we we do all these things that, that makes it pretty tricky for for other people mm-hmm. to to understand. Um, yeah. But yeah, what what have you sort of come across uh with your students mm. that's the most challenging? I think understanding the accent is the biggest thing. Yeah. Because I, most of my students, I've got a mix now, but in the beginning, when I started focusing on Aussie English, 
Most mm. of my students were from uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and like mm-hmm. Asia areas, just mm-hmm. because amazing talk of the platform I was on, I think is a Taiwanese company. And yep. so most of those students, American English, and that's all they were used to hearing. They watched a lot of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. listen to a lot of American English. And this is something mm-hmm. my old manager, he's originally from Hong Kong. I was mm-hmm. talking to him about, before I started my Instagram, I was thinking of like dabbling in Chinese social media. Okay. So I was getting him to check one of my videos and because I just added like default Chinese subtitles on my video. And I was like, can you check this? Anyway, I kept getting my videos flagged because they're very strict. So then I stopped and was like, I'll just do Instagram instead. But my manager was saying that his biggest struggle was what, he'd learned American English. And then Mm -hmm. when he got to Australia for two weeks, he couldn't understand anyone because Mm -hmm. the accent is so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is some resemblance to some British accents, Mm -hmm. but like you said, in a lot of British English accents, they use like the true T or they emphasize those certain sounds, water, better. Most Australians don't say that water, better, (laughs) you know? No, I mean, it seems to be... Anyway, there, there is, I guess, a yeah specific type of person here who will still speak in that way with that sort of British accent. But it seems yeah. to be either, you know, the wealthier or I guess higher educated Australian that, that tends to still keep that more British accent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, or it's like other- I've noticed my sister. So she's, I'm not sure if you do it with your daughter, but my sister, like normally she would say water, but then when she's talking to her daughter, would you like some water? So then, you know, oh, really? while you're talking very clearly <laughs> to her daughter, like that sort of thing. So I think I've noticed in some cases, maybe like parents of young kids or even like primary school teachers, mm-hmm. but they kind of turn that on and off depending on like who they're talking to. But yes, yeah. like you said, people who kind of speak in that more cultivated way yeah. all the time is, yeah, I guess like the higher society, upper class kind of people, but the number's dropping. There's not that many, there's not that many people in Australia now, like the percentage of Australians that still speak with that accent is very, very, very low. Yes. Yes. No, it is. And I, because I also teach Italian. So I do have some students who I'm teaching Italian to who, you know, one's a lawyer, one's an accountant. And yeah, when we're talking about their English, they're still using a lot of slang. And yeah, I don't know, I guess I would expect, yeah, much more of a formal level of English, but no, they, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's mixed now. It's, it's very casual here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and even when you watch the news, like now I've started using some TikTok videos with my students, um, yeah. just like snippets, some short recordings of the, of the news. And yeah, like the language in there is, is pretty informal as well. So yeah. yeah, I kind of I think it's important for them to understand that, you know, if they're going to live mm-hmm. here and and yeah, they want Definitely. to to yeah. stay here. There's but this yeah. one Instagram page I follow and they have like a website and they I don't know if they've got a podcast, but they definitely share Instagram reels like talking. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you follow them pedestrian.tv and their news I article headlines to. full of slang. Like yeah. they're just like full of slang. So I, I sometimes like go through those with my students just to show like, you know, if you want a little bit more of like an informal news approach to reading, yeah. look at pedestrian.tv because like yeah. their, their headlines are wild sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I can imagine. Yeah. I think I used to. Used Things to like see them. you never and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah. Let's not get started on on the younger generation, how they're speaking the language these days. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> True. Yes. <Yeah. laughs> what you were saying um, before about your dad, like mm. when he had said to your, like your Italian friends, you know, Amanda really takes after me and he didn't know how to say yeah, it yeah. in a different way. That's what happened to me the other night with my husband about phone off the hook. He's like, uh, yeah. I didn't leave the phone off the hook. And I'm like, but the phone. And I'm, I'm like, I actually had to stop and think, how am I going to say this a different way? And I'm like, that's why I was like, the phone's on the fridge. Like, yeah, yeah. It's not connected. <laughs> it was yeah. really hard for me to think of another way because I was just shocked. Like, oh my gosh, this is something that people don't really say. No. And then an Indian girl replied to my story and she's like, yeah, we say phone is off the receiver. Okay. Like, oh, 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that yeah. sort I mean, of makes sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, you'd say it's disconnected or something, but oh, yeah. anyway, that uh, disconnected is probably like, yeah, pulled literally out of the wall. Uh, yeah. We so. might think literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It can be really tricky to think of another way. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I guess my dad, he had a lot of trouble, you know, when he came here to Australia because he mm. was 15. And yeah, he, I think, I don't know, chose not to continue school because, you know, obviously he had no English. So mm. he just went it's up and common worked at that age cattle too, farms. wasn't it? Yeah. 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 There was a lot of bullying here in Australia. You know, my mum yeah, was 10 true. when she moved over. and mm-hmm. From Italy too? Yeah. So she was, you know, constantly like having to defend her brother and sister at school because, yeah, there was so much bullying and it was not cool to be from somewhere else. You know, you were not allowed to speak another language. You know, this is why, yeah, they didn't teach my brother and I Italian. They just spoke English to Mm -hmm. us because I guess they didn't see the importance in, in another language. So, yeah, I mean, this was a real shame and and that's why now I I say to my parents, please speak Italian to my my daughter. So they are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of friends from high school with different backgrounds and they don't Mm -hmm. speak the language either because, you know, their parents just spoke English to them. Yeah. But, you know, like I guess hats off to my dad who, who, yeah, he just really picked up the Aussie English. (laughs) And, And, yeah, I mean, that's what stuck with him. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you ask him, you know, any sort of grammatical rules around anything or, you know, how yeah. to, you know, give me a synonym of this, you know, he's got no idea because he, he just learned from speaking. Yeah. Which is true. sometimes a good way to learn the language anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you, you just want to communicate. So the more you speak, the the better it is, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah, how about, because your mum is Italian. Yeah, yeah. So she was actually so, born in Australia. So my grandparents, actually Nono came over first. I think he ended up in Perth because most of the ships stopped in. Then I think he maybe went to Melbourne. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Ended up in Sydney. Mm -hmm. So Nono came over first and then Nono came Mm -hmm. over like, I think two years after with my Mm -hmm. aunt who was born in Italy. Then I don't, I think that was in 1950. I can't remember if it was two or six when they came okay. over. So mum was, yeah, mum was born in Sydney. I, I never actually met my nono. He died before I was born, but nona spoke really broken English. Mm-hmm. She learned enough English to talk to the grandkids and stuff, but mm-hmm. she ended up getting dementia before she died. So she mm-hmm. reverted back to Italian, kind of forgot how to speak yeah. English. And yeah. she was also in like an Italian nursing home. So the staff yeah. spoke Italian, the residents spoke Italian. There was no need for her to have English anymore. So she kind of lost the skill. But we were going to learn Italian when we lived Mm. in Sydney. But when we were, when I was eight, we moved to my small Mm. hometown in New South Wales where the language we Mm. learned was actually Punjabi. And I now live in the Punjab state (laughs) of India, (laughs) which is so funny. Talk about 360. Uh Yeah. And then we just never really learned. Mum never spoke to us in Italian. And I really... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't say I regret it, but I kind of do. I really wish that I I had learned the language, but mum can still understand it. She, Mm. she'll talk to her sisters in Italian when they don't want us to understand what they're talking about. Yes. (laughs) So, you know, that when, when they're talking Italian, they're gossiping about something, but yeah, like my dad's from Australia. So actually my granddad's from England, but dad was Mm -hmm. born in Australia. Gran Mm -hmm. met granddad during world war two. Mm-hmm. went on a ship to get married to him after the war mm-hmm. ended and then they decided they didn't like England then they decided to move to Australia so dad's from an Anglo-Saxon okay. background no other language on either like from grand or yep. granddad's side at all just English mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah well no it's interesting yeah I mean a lot of a lot of English come here I guess they love well anyway whoever comes to Perth loves the climate so yeah they they tend to move over yeah I think you know, with the the broken English. And I mean, it was the same for me mm-hmm. because my, my grandparents is exactly the same. So my granddad knew, I don't know, maybe three words in English. And I yeah. just remember him always saying, carry on, carry on. And you know, that, it was like, <laughs> carry on. Just to mean like, come on, let's go or something. Let, let's do this. Yeah. Let, like for anything that he wanted, some sort of movement, he would be like, carry on. So yeah. <laughs> and then... 
I mean, we didn't see him that often because otherwise, you know, I, I'm sure I could have like learned Italian off him. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we didn't see him too often. But then with my grandma, yeah, she she learned English mm. pretty well, but still putting Italian words, you know, in the middle of, of everything that she was yeah. saying. So I think yeah. you know, that's one of the things that helped me anyway, like learning mm-hmm. Italian. You know, I had to study by myself when I was a teenager, when I was older. But having had heard them, yeah. I guess, just listening to to the flow of the language and the sound definitely mm-hmm. helped me to you know pick it up much much easier yeah yeah later yeah on. so it's so funny, it funny because yeah. you no know people oh sorry <laughs> no no you go yeah yeah <laughs> I was just gonna say it's funny because you know Australians swear a lot well not all Australians I'm definitely one that swears and on my other YouTube channel <laughs> I I swear casually and I've had people say like things about my swearing anyway yeah. And I was doing one video where I was talking about my nonna and then I guess I had been swearing in the video about yeah. something. It's not even like that bad swearing. It's just that I sort of say like, oh, bloody hell or oh, fuck, that sort of thing, right? <laughs> and someone was like, I'm not sure what your nonna would feel about your potty mouth. And I was <laughs> like, mate, she was she was the worst out of all of us. Like she combined bloody hell with shit and she would say, oh, bloody shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 bloody shit. I've heard that before. <laughs> You know, like she nope. was worse. And we, I was yeah. at my brother's wedding last year and I was with like all of my aunts and my mum's sisters and my mum and all my cousins, the Italian side. And I was yeah. telling them about that comment and they were like, oh yeah. my God, like your <laughs> nonna was the worst with swearing. No, I think like, anyway, Italians love to swear. I mean, when I speak Italian, I find myself always saying, which, you know, may seem rude to somebody. I'm always saying cuts or cuts or which, you know, is their way of saying fuck. And I sort of have to constantly think, okay, don't say those words in front of my daughter. But see, now in English, I find myself always saying for fuck's sake. (laughs) So, and my daughter's repeating it, but yes. And it's just like that moment where I lose my patience or, you know, I'm in a rush or or whatever. Yeah. 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 I was like, for fuck's sake. But I wasn't allowed to swear at home. Yeah, like I know my my nonna did as well and like my granddad, but I wasn't allowed to swear at home, like in front of my mum. She would go yeah. mental. That was my dad. So <laughs> yeah. So I yeah, I always had to be really, really careful there. Yeah, I guess she was anyway, mum was like the stricter one and then dad was the softy. Um, yeah. So yeah. That's just yeah. how it was. Yeah. So how did you start learning Italian then? So obviously your parents were mm. Italian, but they spoke to you in English. So did you do like Italian at school or something? And that's how you, you mm. got fluent? So I did Italian, I don't know, I think, was it year eight, nine, maybe? Anyway, just okay. anyway, we didn't really learn very much. So when you learn a language here in school, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to, to criticize or, but I find it's just very basic. You yeah. Know, you learn some animals, you learn some food, nouns. How to introduce yourself. Don't, yeah. <laughs> you know, my name is blah, blah, blah. But yeah. Yeah. Not very I much. I did French so... and I still remember how to say, je m'appelle Amanda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, that's what you learn, right? And then yeah, there's not really that practice of like dialogue and, and back and forth, which yeah. is important. Because you can learn all the phrases in the world. You know, it's what I find sometimes people with Duolingo, like learning a lot of phrases, but then yeah. you don't have that conversational element, which definitely, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you can't always respond with that exact phrase. But yeah, so then I stopped for a while because I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to choose like different electives, different subjects to to study. And then I did it again just for year 11. So when I was, mm-hmm. what, 16? And, yeah, we, we sort of went a little bit more into to some grammar and, and I was able to do a bit more. Then, anyway, mm-hmm. completely stopped. I wasn't speaking to anyone. I was occasionally trying to write um, letters to my cousin in Italy. That's sort of what got me interested because when I was 12, we, with my family, we did a trip to um, Europe and and we we stayed in Italy for a little bit. And knowing that I had cousins the same age and, you know, I wanted to somehow converse with them. And on that trip, I wasn't Mm -hmm. able to really say anything apart from just laugh 
at you know yeah. stupid things yeah I was like I really have to learn and then anyway so that year 11 helped a tiny bit and then I when I was 17 I went for two months to my dad's town by myself in Italy mm-hmm. and that was like when reality you know hit and I was like okay I really don't know anything like not mm-hmm. well I know really basic stuff but I don't know enough and I was taking a little pocket dictionary with me everywhere. And yeah, it was really funny. Before because you don't, do that, you don't do that these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'd be like flicking through to try and find the words, you know, like, hang on, hang on. But yeah. And that was when I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. So anyways, I learned a little bit and, and I found because I was in a very small town because he's from a small, small town close to a city in the South of Italy. So when I was there, it was very much like every night going to the pub in the the piazza, in the square, in the town, and everyone mm-hmm. was there together, you know, drinking beer, playing, you know, what's it called, foosball, yeah, just like playing pool, whatever, and and having fun. So I was very much a part of all of the conversations, but yeah. You know, I always needed the the support of a beer, right? I always needed like <laughs> a beer to help me get through. So then I was like, no, no, I really need to study. So then when I, you know, got back to Australia, I said, okay, I'm going to start studying a little bit more. So it was very much a lot of music. So mm-hmm. friends of mine there, you know, introduced me to a lot of Italian music that that I quite liked, like a lot of rock and a lot of music from like the 70s, which I was quite into. Yeah. A lot of the lyrics were more like poetic, political. So, and, you know, they'd talk about like the culture in Italy and the landscapes and things. So that really helped me learn. And then movies, like I used to watch like a movie every night in Italian. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I went back again to Italy after that. And then that was for six months. And, you know, I kind of... um picked up more influences and material to Mm -hmm. sort of bring back and listen to and read. And then I studied Italian at university as a minor Mm. um, to my degree. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I chose to do, but that was only for one year because then I moved anyway, it's all confusing, but yeah, I moved back to Italy again (laughs) Uh (laughs) I just really wanted to live there so I was going to keep going back and I moved back for my second year of university so I found a way to do an exchange program right and living there I was living in Florence for that second year and you know this was all like before I became an English teacher obviously so that was where I was just fully immersed and I was literally like banging my head up against the wall because I had to study really tough subjects yeah anyway I was lucky because studying an art degree a lot of it was practical yeah so but the theory side of things was completely you know opposite to to what we were learning in Australia like Australia wow you know studying visual arts was sort of like contemporary art and media yeah you know ways of thinking forward and things like that whereas in Italy it was very much set in the past so a lot of historical references they did a lot of restoration they did cultural anthropology like all these texts that I had to read in Italian and yeah that was the wake-up call because I was crying and like why can't I understand like you know um yeah and I was sending the text to my mum saying, can you please translate these for me? And she couldn't even translate them. She's like, oh. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Yeah, I think because I guess she'd been in Australia not for so long. But <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, I slowly got there. And when I came back to Australia to – because anyway, I did my, my second year of university in Florence. And after that year, I moved to London for a year. Just because there was no work in Italy, it was really hard okay. in that moment. So I so moved to London and worked there for a year, but I had an Italian partner. So that really helped as well. Having Italian boyfriends, it's like yeah. the easiest way to learn the language. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? So, like you would think that my Hindi would be 
like advance uh-huh. because I have an Indian husband, his English is getting better. Mm-hmm. He's getting an Australian accent because we just talk in English. And I'm like, mate, we need to do more Hindi because I need my skills. I'm living here. Yeah. I need my skills. And your of English course. is getting better. <laughs> of course. You know what it is? Like, I think it's how you establish a relationship. So if you establish yes. a relationship with a person in English, like the first time yeah, you met, you guys definitely. spoke in English. Now it's really hard for you to go, oh, let's just switch languages. It doesn't feel True. right. It doesn't 100%. feel natural. Yeah. yeah. This is what I found because this boyfriend at the time, like I'd met him in Italy, his English was minimal. So mm. we, I don't know, sometimes I'm like, how did we even like, we enjoyed each other's company so much, but like the language was was kind of minimal. <laughs> but I think we had all the same interests. So we were yeah. able to, but I had to speak Italian to him because, you know, obviously I was was more keen on, on learning that. So that's why. Yeah. But like now my partner is Colombian. So yeah. I've I've left the Italian <laughs> to the side. <laughs> so yeah. it's fine. I mean, now I'm I'm fluent in Italian and you know. As I said, it was a lot of grammar exercises, lots and lots of grammar exercises, being obsessed with the language, with the culture, and just always surrounding myself with Italians. So mm-hmm. that is pretty much, you just have to fully immerse Full yourself. Immersion. Yeah. But now I'm I'm learning Spanish. And yeah, it's, it's really similar to Italian. But there are some, you know, false friends. There's things that you think is, is the same, but then it's a completely True. different word. So that gets yeah. confusing. I speak English with my partner because when we met, we spoke English and he speaks in Italian because I speak Italian to my daughter. And I I said to him, you know, you have to speak Italian with her (laughs) because because I don't want her to not, you know, to forget or dismiss the the language. So he learned really quickly and that's great. So we kind of go, Mm -hmm. go from Italian to English and transition yeah. yeah quite smoothly but then if I go to speak Spanish with him it just doesn't feel natural yeah yeah I can yeah that. it's it's <laughs> like we yeah it depends sort of where you meet and which language you you first start True. speaking in it's the same with my parents I don't speak Italian to them really and yeah, like I go and pick up my daughter or they drop her off, right? And they're still kind of speaking to her in Italian. And then I like respond to them or I speak in English. And then they wow. respond to me in English. It feels weird <laughs> when re- I speak the Italian. relationship that you kind of establish with yeah. them from the start. Yeah. And the same thing happened when I traveled, when I was a little bit older, like living in, in Italy and they came to visit me and we traveled a little bit together. We were speaking English all the time and we were in Italy and yeah, I mean, I wanted to speak Italian with them, but it just didn't, didn't flow. Yeah. So, and what about your brother? Yeah. Does he speak Italian too? Or did he just not, not learn it? No, he, his Italian comes from watching Napoli in Serie A, <laughs> like play soccer. Yeah. So he, <laughs> he, he's pretty much learned all of his Italian from the commentary of the soccer games and he can understand some things, but it, Mm. No, I mean, he doesn't speak, you know, he just knows a yeah. few of the like infinitive verbs, you know, mm. like, yeah, to go, to eat, things like that. Yeah. But no, because he, he's traveled a lot, but he's never lived anywhere else. And yeah. I guess just didn't, yeah, didn't care as much as, as yeah. I did. I just had like this attachment. Like you said before, there's to, not a need. There. Yeah. Not a need in no. Australia. No, <clears throat> there isn't. Here, not at all. I mean, to speak another language, no. I was at some stage, I was at one stage, I was teaching Italian to primary school students here at a a primary school. And yeah, I mean, they're kind of oblivious to the fact that there are other languages that we might need to speak other languages. I went in to substitute, you know, another teacher and I'm like, okay, guys, like with the knowledge that you have, ask me any questions, like, you know, trying to be really enthusiastic. And and they were writing it onto their tablets on Google Translate. And then they said, you know, teacher, teacher. And they pressed play and let me listen to the audio recording. Oh, no. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And and some of them were even laughing at the sound of the language. Whereas I found the ones who had Italian grandparents mm. received it a little bit, you know, better. 
um they were yeah, more open okay. to to learning but anyone else yeah. like nah, whatever and it's kind of sad that to see yeah. that you know hopefully hopefully more and more people can start studying different yeah. languages because you know yeah. once you have another language like look at the, the doors that it opens the the culture yeah. that you're able to learn about the humor I mean for me the sense of humor is you know the different nationalities yeah really, yeah. really important Hmm. yeah so I don't know I mean I'm sure you're finding it the same like now that you're living over there you know Mm -hmm. if you're able to speak to the locals you just learn so much yeah yeah yeah, definitely like my husband's parents don't speak English so I remember the first time that I was home alone with my mother-in-law after I started my Hindi classes and Mm -hmm. we were talking for maybe 30 minutes and I could really understand what she was saying and I was like oh my god the the relationships you can build with other people just oh, yeah. from lo- knowing the language, I <laughs> I could talk to my security guards. Like we don't have electronic security here. We have physical mm-hmm. guards. So mm-hmm. I'll talk to them sometimes. I remember walking home from the gym one night because it's just around the corner. Mm-hmm. At the gym, I bumped into like two girls that I knew from a different gym. Yeah. We were speaking mixed Hindi and English. I bumped mm-hmm. into like my neighbor at the gym. On my walk home, I stopped and talked to like four dogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <And> then- <laughs> the security guards. And then actually Uh before I got to my, my building, I saw another girl from a different gym I used to go to and we just speak Hindi to each other. And she stopped on her scooty and was like having a chit chat to me. And I got home and I was like, Oh my God, like that's the most social I've ever been in one night talking to different people. And it just felt really nice. Yeah. No, I mean, it it does because otherwise you're kind of just living behind a wall and, and I guess, you create this tense environment. I mean, mm. I, anyway, I felt like that with Spanish anyway, you know, because yeah. I there's moments where I am shy and I don't want to speak because I want it to be perfect, whatever I say. <laughs> and that's really bad of me as a teacher to, to say that. Because, I was going to say always, you should know better. <laughs> I know. I'm always telling my students, like, just say anything just you know spit it out whatever words you have yeah but yeah so I'm trying to overcome that I actually find like when my when my partner's not present I'm better (laughs) yes yes I didn't talk to my husband or his parents for like six months in Hindi while I was doing the Hindi school online yeah but I was happily having a chit chat to my teacher every morning but I I refused to speak to like anyone because you know you get you know, your judgment, the people judgment, closest to you. Know. Yeah. They're going to, you feel like they're going to be the ones to judge you the most, but yeah. yeah. Once you kind of get over that fear, then it's a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange how this psychology works because it should be like the other way around. It should be that they're going to yeah. support you more and they're going to be able to help you. And I guess it's because then, yeah, it's like that person that they know who you are becomes, you know, somewhat a baby again who, who yeah. can't communicate and can't, yeah, express, yeah. you know, what they're thinking. So, but anyway, I'm, yeah, definitely trying to overcome that now and, yeah, Good. <laughs> push through. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll start, we'll have to start finishing up. But mm-hmm. before we do, if anyone wants to contact you for classes, either, I know you do pronunciation, PTE, mm-hmm. IELTS, obviously for Italian speakers, how can people contact mm-hmm. you? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram. So it's chatterbox.english.withamanda. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you can send me a DM on there. So send me a message on there and then I will get back to you. I also have a speaking program at the moment. So that's sort of like independent learning where I send all materials and then it's conducted via like audio messages and giving feedback daily. So that's sort of to help people who need a boost to talk more, more regularly, because obviously, you know, the more we do something, the repetition is what's going to help us to learn. And yeah, so guys, you can find me on Instagram and cool. yeah, Amanda has been awesome speaking with you. And as no, I said, thank you for you're, joining you're me. amazing. I love <laughs> what you're doing and Hopefully we can meet one day in person. <laughs> well, look, my yeah. sister lives in Perth, so it's definitely okay, possible there you go. because, yeah, whenever I 
visit Australia. I mean, my next trip, she'll be coming to Brisbane, but I was just in Perth for Christmas the year before last. After Christmas, I went and stayed with my sister for a few days and flew back to India from Perth. So Uh it's definitely possible. Okay. Sounds good. (laughs) If not, I'll have to come to India. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Always welcome. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. (laughs) See ya. Thanks.